What up, watch peeps? I had a long weekend in the sun at a soccer tournament, if you guys can't tell from all this. But man, this is a review that people were after me for, and I can't blame them. I was one of the guys who had one of these in my cart for what seemed like an eternity. But alas, I deliberated too long. Next thing I know, poof, they were gone. Of course, I was mad I didn't buy it once I couldn't get it anymore. You guys know how it goes. But then, by chance, one was offered to me in trade. I wasn't even looking for trades at the time, but when I saw it, I thought, yeah, let's do it. And I couldn't be happier I did. All right, the Synchron Military. I'm Pete, and we are Chillin' With Watches. Where's Jack? Threw on the Doxa this morning because I have a feeling we're going to want to look at this one compared to this one, maybe just a little bit. Now, when I bought my first Doxa, the Sub 300 Black Lung, it came in one of these tubes just like this, which is not surprising as the guy behind Synchron used to be the guy behind Doxa. But these are pretty neat little tube containers. They're like metal. They have this foam insert that cradles your watch very nicely. Inside you will find your dated warranty card and the watch. And that is about it. Now, I did buy this pre-owned. So, I don't know if there's anything else in here. It's not in there now, but I don't know. Looking at the website, it doesn't sound like it came with anything else. Now, these came in both this stainless steel version and a blacked out PVD case version. I think both pre-ordered for $9.90, which as it turns out would have been a great deal, but they went up to a full retail of $12.90. Now both versions are since sold out and I saw they're trading above retail. Last I looked at around $1,400. Now obviously this case design has a strong tie to Doxa, but it is not exactly the same as I will show you. But it is an altogether cool case design. I am a fan of these cushion cases. So we have a full brush case with really nice, sharp, clean corners. Straight cut lugs on the ends here. You guys know like on the skin divers, I like that. I think it has a nice tooly look. It works here. Now this one, looking at the case sides, has a mostly flat bottom with a curved top. And that is one of the differences from the uh, Doxa case, which we'll look at. Now it has a three o'clock crown. It's a six millimeter crown, which does sit proud of the case. It is signed with the Synchron logo. And it is really easy to grip, really easy to use crown. And this crown has more threads on it than any watch I've ever had. It just popped there after like six turns. But really smooth. Now these Salidas have a rather coarse feel to them when you are winding them. And you can feel all the gaskets in that crown grabbing for that 300 meters of water resistance. Now looking at the case side, there is a modest amount of case back protruding from the bottom. Now the case back is signed, this time not with the Synchron logo, but with the military logo. And these are all numbered limited editions as you can see here on the case back. This is number 85 of 500. The compact lug to lug on these is what makes these cushion cases so wearable, very comfortable on wrist. Now looking at the bezel here, you'll see this is the same bezel design and grip as Doxa. This one does appear to be bead, bead blasted if you can look there, which can add to the texture and grip of a bezel. This one is really nice. It has really nice kind of springy clicky action. Full minute track, which again is something I like. You see it often on a lot of military watches. And there is some loom in here as well, which we'll also take a look at. Now, it is a rather wide or, or thick bezel as compared to the relatively small dial opening, which is protected by a flat sapphire crystal, which I think suits the military tool vibe just fine. And that dial, now that's really the showstopper here, along with the handset. Black, white, and orange is my absolute favorite color palette on watches. 
And this one here is wild and fun and most definitely attention grabbing. It's a really busy dial, which makes me wonder what military used such a flamboyant watch? I want to meet those guys. But I love both the Synchron and the military logos that you can see here on the dial, as well as the fonts and those kind of atypical dial text locations. And you'll see behind the second hand there, there is a rather hidden three o'clock date window, which is really well integrated into this dial layout. The chunky orange hands are awesome. The house on the hour hand, as my friend Mr. Brady Tells Time calls it, is really cool and unmistakable. Now that second hand looks a little bit like a GMT hand to me, but I think it is super cool. I totally dig it. Now when you buy these, they come on a genuine Tropic brand Tropic strap, as that company is also part of the Synchron group. But when I got this one, it was on an Uncle Seiko. I have since switched it to this Woolbrook strap, and uh, I think this color combo is killer. All right, let's put this elaborate grade SW200 on the time grapher and see how it's running. And booyah, this thing seems to have settled in at about plus two or three seconds a day with a nice strong amplitude of 301. That means it's running really clean, real efficient, almost no beat error. And of course it has that smooth sweep 28.8. They obviously must regulate these. This thing is running beautifully. Okay, so going over the dimensions of the case, I measured it at about 42.2 millimeters across with a 45.2 millimeter lug to lug. And it came in for everything included 14.6 millimeters thick and it has 20 millimeter lugs. Now going over some of the other specs, as I mentioned, we are looking at a flat sapphire crystal. Uh, on the website, they list it as just Swiss Superluminova. It clearly has that kind of aged look to it, but they don't specify. I'm guessing just a color tint in place there. The movement is an elaborate grade Salita SW200, and it has 300 meters of water resistance. Now on this strap, I measured it at 116 grams. Let's take a look at it on wrist. And here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And I think you can see it is a big chunky tool watch, but because of that compact lug to lug and you know, even that 42 millimeters isn't too much. I think it does wear better and more comfortably than you might think. All right, let's get to those comparisons. Let's take a look at this side by side, the Doxa and note some of the differences. So someone asked me, is it better than the Doxa? Short answer, no. It is a chunkier, less elegant watch, but it is still a really good watch. So the first thing we should look at is perhaps the case sides. Now you'll see it is a thicker case side on the Synchron. It is a flatter bottom, not by much, but by enough that it makes a difference. And I think that thinner case side even with that very slight curve just gives us like a, a sexier, more elegant look to it. Now the Doxa does have a slightly taller bezel, but it is polished, which matches the case side really well. And I think it's a little more cohesive of a look than that bead blasted versus brushed look on the Synchron. Now case back wise, the Doxa probably protrudes further, but because it has such a long shallow slope to it it's it draws less attention and it feels better on wrist this has probably less overall case back but you'll see it's a very can shaped case back the slope doesn't kick in until the very bottom now the other thing we want to note here is the crown the crown on the synchron is just sits proud of the case Whereas on the Doxa, it is very nicely nestled into that case. I just think that's a better, prettier look. Although, you know, if this is a military tool watch, this might be easier to grab and use. Bezels obviously use um, this steel bezel. This uses an insert. 
But you can see, I think this one has a slightly, the Synchron has a slightly thicker bezel than the Doxa, and it also has a smaller dial opening than this 300T. Not quite as small as the Sub 300, but leaning in that way. So yeah, do they wear the same? Almost. The Doxa wears slightly thinner and closer to the wrist for me. Now the SKX is a very similarly sized case at about 42 and a half millimeters. I think you can see here the overall case dimensions do look quite similar. Seiko also has a small dial, but that chapter ring kind of gives another dimension to it and makes the bezel end up being a little thinner. So that is a slightly different presentation. As far as thickness goes, they're quite similar. Synchron does look a little thicker in that view. And I have the CWC here, which is well, a little over 41, so about a millimeter smaller than the Synchron. But another military style watch. It definitely wears smaller than the Synchron. It wears as a thinner, closer to the wrist watch, even with that pass through strap. All right, let's take a look at that loom. Keep the loom. And there we go. You can see those loomed numbers on the bezel. Big giant loom plots on the hands. I love how the hour hand almost looks like a square. If you want to see how that loom compares to the Doxa, you'll see the Doxa is not really a loom powerhouse, but the Synchron does have a lot more loom brightness. Pretty similar, but a lot more and just a cooler presentation on the Synchron Military. So there it is, the stainless steel Synchron Military. This thing kind of came to me. You know how they say, if you love something, let it go, and if it comes back, you know it's real? Yeah, that's kind of what happened here, and I'm totally in love. I don't see this thing going anywhere. It just feels really cool and special, and it's totally a peat watch. All right, before I let you guys go, sneaker check. I'm just wearing my blue old schools, which have faded very nicely over the summer. All right, that's it. I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, please like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.